I want to remind you again that the United States is a nuclear power, but so are the Chinese. The United States has 330 million people. The Chinese have four times that. Do you really want to go to war? Ukraine is important here, not in the ways you might imagine, not about the battlefield that is destroying the people and the land of, of Ukraine, the tragedy that that obviously is. No, here's what I want you to see. The United States went in around the principle, they said, that big, powerful countries should not be allowed to invade much smaller, much poorer countries. Good principle. Most people in the world would support it. And they appeal to the world, therefore, to support the United States, the United Kingdom, Western Europe, Japan, who lined up with and behind the United States. The People's Republic of China is allied with Russia. So the two of them together appealed to the world as well, saying that the American version of what happened there wasn't correct, and they gave an alternative version, having to do mostly with NATO expanding uh, right to the borders of Russia and threatening Russia and all the rest. I'm not here interested in the, in the value of each of these arguments, but here's what I want everyone to understand. In the effort to speak to the many countries of Asia, Africa, and Latin America, the overwhelming bulk of whom are poor, relatively small countries who ought to line up real quick behind the principle that big, rich countries should not invade them, didn't do that. In case you're not aware, the vast bulk of African, Asian, and Latin American countries are continuing their trade with Russia, with China, refusing to line up behind the United States. And that ought to be a sign, if nothing else I've told you is sufficient, that the wind is changing, the climate is changing. Okay, what do we do? Are there some examples? Well, first, I want to start out with something we shouldn't do and are doing, and then tell you about something we should do and we aren't doing. Here we go. If you are contemplating a major confrontation with the world's only closely maybe superpower, China, if you're the United States and your allies, who together are richer and more powerful than China and its allies are, at least at the moment. Still in all, it's a very dangerous road to hoe. If you're really going to put your navy in the South China Sea right next to them, if you're going to arrest executives in their companies, if you're going to ban Chinese companies from listing their shares on the stock market, or at least talk about it, if you're going to hit them with tariff wars and trade wars, and you know all the rest, you're waging economic war. And you're smart enough to know that in the past, economic wars have a nasty habit of disintegrating into military wars. You have to know that. And you have to know that if you're going to go into any kind of war situation, especially a big one, you need your people unified. You need your people all or near, excuse me, nearly all agreed on the rights and wrongs here, solidaristic, trusting one another, prepared and able and willing to present a united front to whoever the enemy ends up being. The United States isn't a unified country. It's more divided and more deeply divided than it has been in a long time. Here in the United States, 
we are talking about Ukraine and China, and we'll do this and we'll do that. No effort to deal with these divisions, or maybe worse, efforts to deal with them that are clearly not working. Very strange. By contrast, in China, the popularity of the government, given the rise in the standard of living of the working class, is no surprise. But they don't face anything like the levels of disunity we do. They are a rising economy. They can bury the tensions, and they have them, and the differences, and they have them, and the inequalities, and they have those too. But they can wrap them up in a sense of an emerging empire that will no longer allow the hundred years of humiliation to continue. Wow. Wow. It would be a great catastrophe, obviously, if instead of working out a way to live together on this planet, the private capitalism of the United States and the mixed capitalism of China and the great likelihood that other countries, Russia, Asia, Africa, Latin America, are going to follow the Chinese model because of what it has achieved. A war approach, an aggressive approach, an attempt to stop the development that's underway is fruitless and dangerous. Britain and the United States came to an understanding. The United States and China has to do that too. The alternative is so unthinkable and so tragic that I appeal to everyone who understands the enormous stakes of where we are to become an advocate of resolving these kinds of tensions, not in military ways. But to do that with the intensity and the creativity we need, you have to understand where we are. We are at the passing of one empire and one system and the emergence of another. 